fine. You yeah. just you just got in today. Yes, I flew in today from Amsterdam. A mini Not marathon. <laughs> Fifteen cities in three weeks. A lot of crazy, movement crazy. going on. Yeah. Um, but congratulations is in order. You just moved from Delft University in Amsterdam to uh, Umeå University in Sweden. What's your research and teaching focusing on right there now? Uh, so the, uh, the, re the reason I moved to Sweden is part of a very large effort that Sweden, Swedish government is putting on AI. They really are investing seriously on uh, fundamental research on AI. Mm -hmm. And in specifics of what I'm doing there, it will be about understanding what the societal and uh, ethical legal impact of AI is, and then translate that back into developing systems which are better or more uh, aligned with that potential impact. So I'm not an ethicist, I'm not a legal person, I'm a computer scientist, I've built these systems for more than 30 years, and uh, from that part is what interests me, that really the possibility is to learn from the impact and build that into the systems. Yeah, we heard yesterday from one of the speakers the, ne the necessity of team, it's like you have to have people from multiple disciplines, so you definitely. don't have the legal background, yeah, yeah. but you've got the no, AI expertise. No, definitely, yeah. yeah. And so, AI is not anymore a computer science discipline. It is an inter interdisciplinary discipline, if you can tell it like that. Yeah. It, we, don't, we cannot do it anymore just from the uh, technology, the engineering perspective. We really need to have the input from legal, from ethicists, from uh, soci so sociologists, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Collective, collective teamwork there. Exactly. So AI, where, where does the hype end, and when, where does the reality start around what artificial intelligence okay, is? So. Maybe I can just tell you a little secret. AI is not magic. A lot of us, we start believing that AI is something magic which is happening to us. It is not happening to us. We are making it happening. Mm. And that is very much the reality. It's some things, some technology, it's an artifact, it's a tool. Is a product, a system, a service which we are building, and we are building that from the, our necessities, from our backgrounds, from our purpose, and uh, we might try to sell it or hope that it someday will become magic and uh, solve our problems. Or on the other hand, there are all those people who believe it uh, cannot do nothing, don't, don't need to do nothing because it will come and kill all of us. But it is very much dependent on what we are putting into the system. It's not happening for uh, to us. We're really making it happen. So the hype is that it's magic and yes, it's going to yeah, save yeah, us. Yeah, when yeah, really, it's definitely, the no. humans working in tandem with exactly, the system. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think will be the biggest impact of AI on our lives as we think about the next five to ten years? Uh, I think the, we are seeing it now already. AI is increasingly, or systems by, which are based on AI, are increasingly making decisions on our behalf. Some of those decisions we want them to make. Some of those decisions we have no idea that they are being made for us. But increasingly, the system is taking our decision capability, extending, ex uh, exploring our decision capabilities. If you see the, in the web as a way to explore and to extend our communication capabilities, mm -hmm. it is what's going to happen with AI is that our decision-making capability will really be distributed and extended in, a, in ways that we at this moment might not even be aware of what that will be mean. That's exciting and kind of a scary thought mm -hmm. at the same time. What's the range of, of different types of decisions that we're thinking about here? Potentially any decision. A decision is a choice between many possibilities. Mm. If machines are good, some, or computers are good on something, is on the ranking possibilities. And the, the exciting thing here is that it is up to us to develop the systems which align these decisions with our own human values. And that is where we really have to be working on. The alignment with the, the human alignment. values yes. yeah, 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 So yeah. I love that values piece. When we bring it back to a company perspective, how do you think companies will use AI, and what are some use cases of how that's happening right now that you're fond of? Yeah, we see it already in many places. Uh, any uh, time you use Facebook or you use Google even, uh, Google is ranking your search uh, uh, results in a certain way, which is based on many, many things, on all kinds of things that you, some of them you might be aware of, other ones you are, we are not really aware of it is, but those things are happening. Mm -hmm. What it will be kind of the, the issue for us is to be, be aware of that and also be aware of what does it mean. We are these bubbles are intended, intended, intentionally or not are being created because we cannot anymore make sense of information or of all the availability of media and data as we could maybe 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so therefore, the 
some choices are being made for us. What we see has uh, the order of uh, news, the order of search uh, results are being made for us, and we have to be aware of that. And we have to be aware that if we make the, the search in another way, if we make the search in another country, if we make the search at another time of the day, the search and the results might uh, change. Yeah. And uh, so when companies are using that very much in many cases for their own commercial advantage. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's what companies are doing and are, uh, are expected to doing. But to, what we should do to, is really to understand that that's happening. And there is a very big role for informing people of what's happening and for education and so on. Yeah, uh, Dr. Khanna had mentioned yesterday, you know, it's important to use AI not to push your company agenda, but to serve the customer or the consumer. It's are there any companies that you see who are using AI really well right now? Uh, there are several companies. I don't know if we should go talk about uh, names or whatever, but I could give you... It, it is not only up to the companies, it's also up to us. An example I always give is if you go to the supermarket and you go buy eggs, you have uh, all options in which eggs you can buy, at least. I don't know, here in Germany, I suppose so. You have free-range eggs. You have eggs who are from epi chickens. You have eggs who are from very badly treated chickens. You have all kinds of po possibilities. And as a consumer, you also have a power in what you decide. You can put your money, decide to go for the money and buy the cheap eggs, which might be not the ones who are the nicest for the chicken. <laughs> Uh, or you can go and buy the eggs which you believe on. If you believe that chicken should be tre treated uh, in a certain way, or if you believe that thing should be developed organically or so on. So we as consumers and in AI will have this choice as well. At this moment we expect that all that we get on the internet is for free. There is nothing as a free lunch, as we all know. So we are paying all what we are using and getting on the internet or on the web by giving our data to all kinds of parties which we have no idea what they are going to do with it, but we might start having choices. And then it's up to us to decide, yes, okay, I'm paying it with my data and we'll see what it gets, or I'm taking the, ch the option of choosing other types of certis. And therefore, as I don't understand nothing about eggs, but I trust that there are some agencies who know about eggs and which put stamps on those eggs telling that the eggs are a certain type of egg. We'll see more and more this type of development. And that I think there is already uh, quite some advances on that. Uh, companies or organizations developing certification or auditing mechanisms mm -hmm. so that even if we, we don't have to understand what the algorithm does, we don't have to understand how those things work. I also don't understand how my car works. I know that if I push the gas pedal, that thing is supposed to go quicker. And if I brake, I hope it will really stop. Uh, we can do it in the same way. We have these organizations which guarantee, OK, we have checked it. We know we are experts on how those things are. And we will uh, guarantee for you that this type of algorithm, this type of system, is according to a certain set of principles. Yeah. So I like that. This is the intentionality about the decision-making process and also yeah. the trust True. and the yeah. thing that's yeah. going to happen that's promised to happen. And eggs are a fairly simple way to approach it. But when we think about, I'm going to talk about companies and consumers a little mm -hmm. bit. How else can we be more, uh, make sure that we're being more responsible and accountable for the ways that we're using, using AI when we think about methods, eth ethics, regulations? Sure, yeah. So that is uh, uh, quite a lot of developments at the moment. There is hardly any day that there is not yet another country, another organization, another company who doesn't come up with a list of responsibility principles or their AI principles as they are, see it, see it from their own perspective. So it is something which two years ago no one was talking about. Nowadays, if you hear about AI, the word ethics is very much coming in the one or two sentences later. So the realization is there. And it's something that, in a sense, surprised me because it's never been there in the previous 30 years that I was working in this field. And now all of a sudden, everybody is talking about the ethics. So that, I think, is already a very good one. Yeah. And then we have this type. Of, of course, there is many, many types of principles and many, many reasons to put those lists of principles uh, up. But we'll see more and more governments, uh, here in our case in Europe, Euro in European Union, uh, but also organizations, consumer organizations, civil rights organizations, which really are coming up with uh, what do we think as 
company X or uh, country, whatever, uh, that is AI in a way that fits our own uh, way, uh, our own culture, our own values, our own way of doing things. Mm. And that I, uh, that I think is one of the, the, the things which we will, and the trust, like you say, we will need to generate and to be able to build the trust in this type of movements. So thankfully, there are experts like you who are on the case, who are making sure that we are, that we are yes. well informed enough. But you're yeah. not alone. No. I know you were just appointed to high-level expert group on AI at the European Commission. Yes. Yep. That's where it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're everywhere. I love this. So what does that group do, and what's, what's the aim? So the group is uh, set up by the European Commission um, or top, uh, uh, I don't know, they don't call it a government, the council or whatever. The, so the, the top of the European Commission. Uh, they gave us two tasks, and this is all tasks which we should be uh, resolving and preparing for the coming government of the European Union. Every few years we change the government of the European Union, so all the commissaries and the President Juncker and whatever are going to stop in more or less one year time. And they want the coming government to be informed about what means AI from a European perspective. So the two tasks that we have is yet, again, one of these uh, lists of ethical principles for AI as European, as it would fit Europe and Europeans. Mm -hmm. And the other one is to come up with suggestions or uh, uh, proposals for policy and investment strategies for Europe. So where should Europe their money, and what kind of policies should Europe be setting up for these systems. One example that we see, uh, that we all uh, have noticed the last few months, is the GDPR, the Data Protection uh, Guidelines. And in the same way as the GDPR has been developed, they want to come up with a set of principles for other types of issues, not only privacy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yep. So many different moving parts. Yes. And as you think about that and how policies are shifting and how proposals are being presented for how those things will be informed, what are you most excited about as it relates to the future of AI and what we have the capacity to create through it? Uh, I do believe that AI will f ultimately contribute to a better world for all of us. And it's very easy to talk about we and us and uh, the world. We typically don't agree you know, in, in nothing, not on what we find important and so on. But I think that in two, two ways AI will contribute. Firstly, by enabling us to understand better each other's ways of doing, of deciding, of uh, uh, choosing. And in other end, to uh, help us put our uh, believes our principles to use in a good way so that we really can uh, make a difference. Yeah, that's yeah. the core function, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. On yeah. A human yeah. Level. That's why we, are the, why we, are, we develop technology, and in a sense, AI is just the next technology. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that it brings us back to our core as humans so we yes, can move I think a little so, further yeah. forward. Yeah. I definitely believe so. That that's, that's why we should be doing it. Yeah. So I could stand here and ask you a zillion questions about AI, but I won't because I see our time is running down. But okay. I know you are I'm giving speaking, a talk this uh, afternoon. Yes. For, um, what are you going to be talking about and who should join the conversation? So I'm going to talk a bit more in detail on this type of issues. I'm also going to discuss how can we really build. So now it was just about we should do it. But how can we approach the building of a responsible approach to designing AI systems? And I'm also going to talk about what does it mean for AI a system a piece of software and wires and metal to make ethical decisions, whether that is a possible thing or not. So that will be the, the discussion this afternoon. Fantastic. I need to add that to my schedule. If you okay. check in the app, it's at 4 p.m. Join me at the talk. I'll be there tuning yeah, in. Somewhere in the other side, I believe. Yeah. Somewhere in the other side. I think it's uh, <laughs> Gashauser. My, my German is not good. Yes, but if you look in one. the app, it yeah. starts with a G. Yeah. That's not useful. <laughs> the schedule is in there and you'll find it and she'll be there at 4 o'clock. Thank you exactly. so much. Thank you very much. Really yeah. Thank you. It.